Join me now from Washington with more on all of this. CNN national security commentator and former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Mike Rogers. Uh, Mike, thanks so much for being with us. I want to talk first about this story we just got about Massachusetts, the son of a cop arrested by federal officials because he was planning to carry out some horrific crime on college campuses with a pressure cooker blowing it up in a campus cafeteria, then opening fire. We just got a family, a statement from the family of Alexander Socolo. It reads, while we were saddened and disappointed to learn of our son's intentions, we are grateful that authorities were able to prevent any loss of life or harm to others. At this time, we would ask that the public and the media recognize our grief and respect our desire for privacy. Uh, it, it is interesting, Mike, that this man's father, this young man's father, a Boston cop, tipped off authorities that he was concerned about the son. What do you fear might have happened had he not said anything? Well, two things. They, they, because the father cooperated early on in the investigation and pointed out this, his son's erratic behavior, they were able to work in, they being the FBI, a confidential informant, somebody that could get close uh, to this individual, uh, get, you know, get, gain his trust, and then try to elicit what his intentions were. And clearly those intentions were real and serious. So without that first phase, God only knows, this could be a very, very different story about a mass shooting at a, at a college or university with lots of casualties, unfortunately. It is clear, uh, we're being told, that this man did have a long history of mental illness. But this is a case, Mike, not but he had mental Ill illness. It's probably a case of and he had mental illness. You know, ISIS preys on people who are troubled, who are seeking answers outside the realm of reason. Oh, absolutely. This is the exact profile of somebody that they're trying to reach. And, and clearly, he had been influenced by ISIS um, ideology and certainly propaganda. He had talked about a pressure cooker. They've been talking about schooling people in the West about how to use a pressure cooker for years. He clearly uh, had at least touched that. Uh, he was inspired by the mass shootings in Tunisia. Uh, he thought that that was a powerful way to, to, uh, uh, to, to have a, a terrorist event like this by the, when they went down the beach just shooting people indiscriminately. So he combined both of those. Uh, efforts in in trying to pull off this terrorist attack. So yes, that profile of him being having mental illness, being a little uh, uh, estranged from his family, is the perfect fit for them uh, trying to inspire some of these folks to do something like this. And we do not know yet if he had direct contact with anyone from ISIS or anyone overseas. But that doesn't matter to an extent if he was inspired by the rhetoric that is so available online. Oh, exactly. This is why they do it, John. This is why they have such an effort in propaganda in the United States and Europe and other places. And it really started back in Australia. If you remember, they were encouraging people not to come to Syria to fight, uh, but to take matters in their own hands in Australia, get knives, cut people's heads off, randomly kidnap them, cut their heads off, and put it on video. This is clearly what their message has been over time, and it's working. And that's why the FBI had these 10 arrests. Uh, very recently, mm -hmm. uh, this particular arrest, uh, the shooting in Boston, was all related to their propaganda campaign to influence these individuals to take the next step and commit an act of terror. That's what's so concerning about it, and they're very effective at it. Now, all the way around the world right now, the uh, Iraqi Defense Ministry claims that there's an offensive being launched against ISIS in Iraq. They're trying to take back Fallujah, maybe ultimately Ramadi and the rest of Anbar province. How much confidence do you have, based on what you know right now, that this will be successful? Well, this is so far from an, uh, an offensive action. What they're doing is positioning uh, soldiers around Fallujah to, to see if they can keep the fighters in Fallujah while they position people uh, to go in and, and take Ramadi and uh, in, in the outposts around Ramadi from ISIS. So this is a long way from an offensive very few uh, direct attacks. You're not seeing real combat uh, action by these troops. This could take days. It could be weeks. It could be months. Uh, and given their past performance, you have to be a little bit skeptical. I'm optimistic if they continue to put their, put their troops in the right places and then execute. But I'm skeptical that they'll be able to pull it off in any meaningful way. It's a great point. It's not an offensive until they actually take up arms and attack. Mike Rogers, thanks so much for being with us. Really appreciate it. Thanks, John.